I'm Mr. Tass again in this video episode. I'm going to be diving in on five art teacher supply must haves. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. If you're a teacher, make sure you head on over to the Ms. Art Teachers Pay Teachers Store by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT to find hundreds and hundreds of art lesson plans and resources that you can use in your classroom. They're all easy to use, kid friendly, engaging, and fully prepped so you can say bye bye to the stress and hello to success. Now let's head on in to this episode. Okay, my number one favorite must have is oil pastels. Those ones have grown on me in every single year and over the decades. I'm so so in love with oil pastels, one, I don't have to sharpen them. So if a kid comes up and asks you to sharpen it, you do not need to sharpen it and they're good until you can no longer hold them. Don't worry about oil pastels getting that dirty look. I don't I don't even worry. I don't even worry if there's pigment on my own. I just it makes a smudge of like say I have a white and there's blue on it. It'll make either a little blue smudge for like two seconds and then it's gonna be white and clean. Clean. I just don't worry about that smudge. It just becomes part of the artwork. Just you just have to say the medium's guiding you on this. It's just the medium's gonna do what the medium's gonna do. And you'll get that laissez faire um, attitude if you work with clay, let me tell you. Oh my goodness, it's gonna do whatever it wants. So, number one is oil pastels. It's like you can get a painterly effect without paint. You can do color theory, you can teach color theory with oil pastels and color mixing. Um, you can do layering, you can practice adding uh, white to create tints or highlights or black to add shadows or other colors like blue and purple or brown um, to create shadows and, and explore a form on a two-dimensional surface. Um, and you can also do mixed media processes. You can paint on top for like oil resist or wax resist pro uh, paint process. Anyways, they're so versatile and I love them. Get oil pastels. Number two is watercolor paints. They are a super easy paint to work with and they always dry and look beautiful every single time. You don't have to wash the palettes, which is why I like to use watercolor paints. I get the tube forms, I put dots in my plastic, those cheap plastic palettes, the circle ones, then I let it dry completely till it is rock hard. And you might be thinking, what are you doing? No! Then you just take your, you give all the kids like a bucket of water that has this much water in it so that way if it falls over, it's okay, but the center of gravity is nice and low because it's so big. Anyways, they dip it in and also they can share it with the table. Dip, swirl, swirl, swirl on the paint and now they can paint and it's good to go. That's what I do as an artist um, in my own practice. So I love watercolor paints. You can do painting, theory, color theory, mixed colors, everything with watercolor paints. It um, produces vibrant colors, it's super even. And then also the fun thing is, is that you could do resist painting with them, right? You could draw with wax crayons or oil pastels, like I said first, paint on top, and that gets rid of all those little white parts that they might have missed, and it looks so pretty after. Watercolor paints, there's no cleanup, or it's very minimal, it's good to go. I love watercolor paints, because there's not a lot of time to prep and clean, so they're already ready to go. All right, my question for you is what is your favorite must-have medium? Let me know your favorite medium as a teacher in the comments below the video and then check out everybody else's answers so we can kind of create a community discussion and see what else everybody all thinks of. Number three is tubs or trays. I like to get tubs and trays. So what I, I like to do is I like to get rid of all the boxes of felts and boxes of crayons and I just dump them into trays. I just go to the dollar store and get different assorted um, trays. Uh, for something like oil pastels and soft pastels or charcoal, I will get lidded food containers, it's like Ziploc or whatever, lidded snack lid containers, and then I just put all my mediums in there for enough for a table. So there's a few packs, oh, well, there's a lot more than a few in here. These are just, this is my personal one. That's why it's in this Ikea one. I don't recommend this one because it's tippy, which is fine for just me in my own studio, but I wouldn't want it as a teacher because it's tippy. Do you want to pick up all this? It's just asking for disaster. It's tippy. Anyways, get something more like this one. Like this is a good tray, right? This one just has my personal felt markers in it. Just a tray, I use the same things in my own art studio as I do in my classrooms. Um, but trays, tubs, don't do that. 
are really great and easy. Um, again, for some things that are messy, if they get stepped on, I put them in a lidded snack container. Um, or put them in snack containers anyways, because then you can stack them on your shelves for less space or taking up. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to put them all into tubs. So I have like a bin of oil pastels and they're all stacked in their trays inside the other one, right? So that way when I go to prep, they're all pre-ready. I just grab it and I take them out to each of the tables. For each table, I have a tray. I have a tray for each table and then when I'm prepping or I'm switching between classes, I just be like, okay, we're using felt markers and wax crayons. Boom, boom, on the tray, and then I call up a kid to come grab it. And then we're putting it away. I can't even get it for older kids. They can put them back into their bins that are labeled. All right, stack all the oil pastel containers in the oil pastel container bin, whatever. Um, or if they're lidded, they stack really easy. They can stack on the shelf or just, I like to put everything into another, another bin so that way it looks tidy. And then also I can grab it and go. Um, and also I don't have to worry about it falling everywhere and disappearing, getting or disorganized. It just keeps it nice and clean and tidy. So I like to do that, to be honest. All right, number four is construction paper. I see it all the time. People are like, what should I do with all this construction paper? And I just wonder like, why are you not using your construction paper? It's, you don't have to use it for crafts. It is a beautiful paper. One, use it, decide to, okay, change up the background. Now your background is starting as orange or pink or green. That's your starting point is a color versus a white all the time. Start off with the construction paper as a background and build on that. They are perfect paper. It's a perfect paper for soft pastel. It blends beautifully on construction paper. Use your construction paper with your soft pastels beautifully. Um, and then it's also great for um, oil pastels. You can color on top and cut it out and you have a, you're using that as a colored background to start with. Um, and then you can layer it, cut out different elements. So you draw with oil pastel, you cut out the different elements and layer them on another piece of paper that's a different color. I don't know. You can paint lines on top of it and then do cuttings and assemble your cuttings of painted, slightly painted oil, um, construction paper to make something. You can sculpt paper sculptures with construction paper. I don't know why people are not using construction paper. I don't know why there's so much. I have so much red construction paper. Well, I guess you're gonna start off with a lot of red backgrounds, my friend. Or if you use soft pastel, it doesn't really matter what color the paper is because soft pastels want to eliminate the color and go over top anyway. So it doesn't matter, just use your soft pastels. Oh, I got lots of red paper. I guess we're using a lot of soft pastels for the next little while. There we go. Or, or, or oil pastels, it'll cover it up also. Or it's gonna be an opportunity to think outside the box. It doesn't mean that you're going to cut out a bunch of hearts for Valentine's Day and that is the end of it. And you can't see, I feel like people just cannot see past the color of the construction paper and the fact that it's construction paper. Just use it as a medium. Just use it. It's awesome. Stop being hung up on it. Okay, my very favorite one, number five, is cardstock paper. I, if I'm not using construction paper, I'm using cardstock for white paper. Um, paint printer paper is way too thin and it's just garbage um, for art, but not cardstock. Cardstock is just a little heavier, but if you get them in the big packs, it's cheaper than buying artist quality for your classroom. And for most circumstances, it's good enough because they're not going to go start showing this in a gallery, are they? They're just learning how to create and it's affordable. I wouldn't use that on my own art practice. I mean, I could, I'm an artist and nobody can determine what I use, right? You could put dirt in a gallery and call it installation art if you have an intent behind it or meaning. So you could, but I don't. Um, but it's perfect for kids and it's versatile. It doesn't get developed holes when they scrub too hard with water and paint. Anyways, I love cardstock. That's what you see me use all the time in all my videos um, or in my lessons. I'm using construction paper and I'm using cardstock. They are cheap and they are affordable and they are easy to find and it takes away a lot of stress off your back. You have enough going on. There's hundreds of kids. You don't need to get, don't get worried about all the things. Use what's easy and available. We are creatives. We can get past the fact that it's just construction paper and cardstock, can't we?
We got this. Yes, power to us. All right, my friend, if you're looking for any of these art supplies, I will link to them below in the description of the video so you can find them and check them out on Amazon and start your research there. If you wanted to look into them as possibilities for your classroom, they are Amazon affiliate links. That means I do get a commission should you click any of those links um, and make a purchase. For example, you have to actually make the purchase for me to get a commission. But I'm only linking to things that I actually think are valuable um, for more ideas or for uh, very specifically how to encourage children to make art. That's your next video to watch, how to encourage children to make art. You can check out that video by clicking the link above or in the description of the video. And I'll see you in that episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Like this video and subscribe subscribe to this channel so that I can continue making these YouTube videos for you. Otherwise, I don't know if it's even worth my time, but I really enjoy YouTube. So please help me out by liking and subscribing to this channel and I'll see you in the next episode.